Henry, let's go to your topic. Okay. What do you want to talk about? So we talk about movies, games, TV shows. Board games. Yeah, that is what Music, other games. Stuff like that. We never talk about books. Mm, mm. Books. So I wanted to talk about what are your favorite book series? And I'm going to give Barrett a stipulation. He can't talk about Harry Potter. No, bullshit. I get to talk about Harry Potter for at least the first five minutes of the time. <laughs> I, I also call bullshit because that's like, that that's a big book series. That's I a think. huge yeah. book but series. But we always talk about Harry Potter. Harry Potter is fucking fantastic. Okay? I'm, gonna, I'm just going to let him I, I like just, Harry Potter. Just, at least let me do this for the first like five to ten minutes and, and then I, I'll shut the fuck up. And then you have to talk and about And I just books. got Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them so I can understand it more. Well, that doesn't really have like the story of like what's going to go on oh. in that movie. The Fantastic Beasts and Where to them Find Them book is actually like a book about like the animals. It's like mm. the book, a textbook that he has. Gotcha. It's like when you, it's like well, when I'm people fine. make. I'm glad like I got those, it anyway. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it's a fun read. Definitely yeah. read it. Um, so it's like when people make those fake zoology books of like, <clears throat> exactly. here's how animals would go with humans. Here are like all the animals from Star Wars or whatever. Like that's yeah. basically what I, that is. I had a copy of that book and I really want to get a new one. Harry Potter is fucking fantastic, and I try to get you to read it. And like you were started, I think you finished the first one or no? I finished didn't. the first one. The thing was, is that I really wanted. To start, you still um, have like the first my first three copies or whatever. I think I have the the first two. two. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, I finished because I got a new one. set that looks fucking awesome. Yeah. So I was like, I'll I'll give these to uh, Ricky. For I want to see this guy build a chair out of Harry Potter collections. I <laughs> I watched the first. I watched it. I'm so used to watching them. Yeah. I read the first one and I really liked it. The thing was that I was already reading um a book by the about the doors. What was it about Jim Morrison specifically? And I was really yeah. excited. To okay. Read it. And then I also had the Velvet <clears throat> Underground one. Do you still have that book? Or do you I, give I, I do. Okay. 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 Um, yeah. Also, I want to give a stipulation. You can also talk about nonfiction books you really like. Okay. Okay. Like um, not just like novels and stuff. Um. So Harry Potter is fantastic, obviously. And the reason why it is is because it's this whole series about basically accepting death and the way J.K. Rowling, like, writes these books and brings things back. Like, the we talked about in AP English in senior year of high school, uh, we had a day where we talked about Harry Potter because Mr. Kim was like, you're not allowed to write about Harry Potter for um, your – AP test because everybody writes about Harry Potter and if you do that shit they will not give a shit like they'll they'll be tired and they won't care. This reminds me of something funny that I did on my AP test where you wrote about Harry Potter. No, <laughs> no, you want to know what I wrote about? What I wrote about Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead huh. because I you did would the play yeah. yeah. Um, so um, we talk we talk about this whole like day of like how like each book mirrors each other in a way of like one and seven have a lot of similarities and structure and it's things like that come back. And then it's like, it, it is like poetry, George Lucas, but good poetry. And then like two and six are very similar in the way of they deal with uh, Malfoy a lot. And then uh, three and five deal with, um, and then four, it's like crazy similar uh <laughs> three and five like deal with um like Sirius black and like his relationship with harry potter and um what else like voldemort was sort of like a villain in those but he wasn't like in it a lot like yeah. in those like in three and five uh and then four is like where the center happens four is where everything changes that's like the that's where like um, the break comes is. back. Uh, yeah, like Voldemort comes back and so the Goblet of Fire. Like, yeah, and you have the Goblet of Fire. It's and like this new, this like, this weird like uh, like uh, school change. It's not like a regular school year or anything. And I think that is the first book where someone dies. Yeah, Cedric, Wait, that's the first one. Where, Cedric Diggory. That's the first one where he's officially back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the first one Voldemort's officially back, and but that is also like the first uh, book where. Someone dies, and it, it, the deaths just keep coming in like the later books. And that mu um, the music that they play were to celebrate, but he's but Cedric's dead. I always know. Like, so like, I just fucking, like, uh, I don't tear up when Cedric dies, no. like that moment. But when the dad comes running up, he's like, "That's my boy." That fucking yeah. hurts me to a core. Yeah. Good job to whoever that guy is because yeah. that was that was a well said line. The part that kills me is Christ. when um, Dumbledore is talking about it after. Yeah, uh, and. Uh, I don't remember if there is actually a speech in the book. I, I think there was a speech in the book. I I haven't read it in like a couple, like a year and a half or so. so. I think what you had mentioned was that he said more. Yeah, like there's always like more to the books than there is to the movies. Like 
Um, like some of the great moments like in the books that aren't showcased at all in the movies are like um, in the sixth one where Harry and Dumbledore are going through all of like Voldemort's like memories and stuff. There's way more to it. Like they do like a whole history of like who his mom was and like it was right. before Voldemort was even born. And uh, it was about like their like memories when uh, Voldemort was like a like a later teen and like in his like early adulthood of like finding all of collecting what would eventually become the Horcruxes and like uh, one of the best scenes, which was like left out of the movies entirely was Dumbledore's like, funeral, um, which was fucking tragic. Oh, yeah, and they, they don't that. do that at all yeah. in the books. Um, and so I think like uh, high fantasy is definitely not my thing uh, with the exception of the Witcher and Harry Potter. And it is it's not because like I'm not into Harry Potter because of like the the magic or whatever. Like that stuff's cool, but it's just because it's this great, well well told story of accepting death and how the books sort of mature along with like its core audience. Like we grew up with that and like the books like showcase of like how people go through through life and like the first couple years of your life, you don't really think about death. You don't really think about these things. And then it slowly turns into like accepting death from others. And then it turns into like finally letting go of your life and all of these things and coming to terms with like the people that you have lost uh, throughout your years. And the, it's, it's that. And also the, the strong fucking characters in that. Yeah. Like, um, Harry himself is a little weak, and that's just because, like... He's a, a Joseph Campbell hero of a thousand faces. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's like the Luke Skywalker, basically. Like, he's like, exactly like Luke Skywalker. Like, they it's don't like, really... But he's, he's like not Luke, as he's fucking... He's like Goku, com- he's like all those characters. Yeah, where yeah. he's not, like... He's cool, but he's not as interesting as everybody else. Of so, like, Hermione, who's, like, one of the strongest female characters I think, like, I've ever known. And that's something, like... like I've grown up with, like, a lot of people in Ohio who, like grow up at like not respecting women and like that's like a big thing now is like yeah, a shit respect for women and i think one of the things like i've grown up with like powerful female figures like my mom is like a big inspiration of just like how like how strong like a, a woman can be and yeah. like how just like they're just people you know like yeah. and she's like, tough cookie yeah and uh, hermione is like <laughs> one of those like, thing like a, a female character from like something from fiction that like i grew up with that like made me think like they're just people, and so like, like she, the, the she, sexism towards like a woman, like I don't understand it. Like um, she, like Hermione was like the first, one like, of and, the first and, and that's the fucking thing that, that could be like that could be your favorite character. And yeah, exactly. No, like, and it why. never like we talked about Miss Valenta in our last topic of how she's all about like she's a feminist. What if we had her as a guest on this? <laughs> that would actually be fun. Like I wouldn't I would mind. Like actually, I haven't talked to her in a long. I know. I'd love um, to talk to her again. So like she's a like she's feminist. She's all about like girl power and all that stuff. I don't know what to call. Um, and it's so weird to me that like she only read like the first two Harry Potter books I think she says Hermione is like a terrible female character and it's like really in the first one I can highly understand that she is showcased as this very whiny annoying girl and but you know what like every fucking 11 year old was whiny and annoying like Ron was just as annoying as an 11 year old and like she never gave the later books a chance because she had such a bad bad experience with the first two yeah. and it's like you got to see like where her character goes and um plus i think a part of it might be like because she's much older than us so she doesn't have like that pure sense of like yeah going back to it yeah no. and um, like that's my major problem i feel like i can never get into harry potter as much as definitely not you mm-hmm. probably not you me and Alyssa and Alex O'Neill. Uh, oh, okay. we got to start. Oh, and um, you Caleb. just have a Potter cast. Yeah, we need to have a Alex O'Neill and Caleb from Bonus Points. You, you two, myself and Alyssa Shimoto. We need to start a Potter cast. So that shit would be dope. I'm, um, I'm just waiting for like Al- Alex O'Neill needs to come here when Fantastic Beasts comes out to see it with you. Yes, that would be the best. <laughs> and you can just hold each other and like slowly rub each other's um, over the pants. But anyway, like the I the one last thing I want to say about Harry Potter is it's just the world building in like in those books are fucking fantastic. It's and, exceptional. E- and and even before the movies came out, like I had like such like she had created a world in my mind and I had like all of these thoughts on like what stuff looked like and like where like how Diagon Alley was uh, organized and all this stuff. And 
even after the movies, like reading the books, I still have like a different view of like what the and the prisoner of Azkaban, like the hotel that Harry stays at in Diagon Alley, where um, like the minister tells him like, oh, like you don't go to Azkaban for blowing up your aunt or whatever. Yeah. Uh, that place, like I still have like a very different view of what that place looks like, even yeah. after the, the movie, um, just because of how well she just describes things in in her books. I'm sure uh, if they ever do like more, <clears throat> if they ever do like another attempt at a series of unfortunate events movies, that exact thing's gonna happen to me. <clears throat> well, yeah, they're doing uh, Netflix. Yeah, it's gonna be great. Uh, um, well, we'll see. It, it has Neil Patrick Harris. So. I've always wanted to see like, like, like remember your Harry Potter TV show idea? Yeah, Netflix. So, I, so I, in ten years, hit me up. It'd be crazy. And hit up Nick Scarpino, and the two of us will make the perfect fucking script. For season one of Harry Potter, so the I've, Netflix series. I've always wanted to and see Harry Potter. And then it'll Harry be so Potter. good, you'll just, have to, you'll just have to make the rest of them. I've always wanted to see Harry Potter, because we were, like, talking about Coraline earlier. <clears throat> yeah. And, like, a kind of, like, a Coraline-y, like, kind stop of motion. Up, like, stop motion mm, animation that, thing. Like, kind of, I, like, I'm a huge fan of claymation, so I'm yeah. always for that. Yeah. Like, I, I just actually, thought that would be, like, a really want, cool Like, project. I don't know if I would do stop motion, like, claymation, uh, claymation or anything, but I would actually wouldn't be opposed to doing a cartoon Netflix Harry Potter series. Yeah. Like I have a very like distinct, you can do like, so much more art with style. It. Exactly. And, 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 and that kind of like, see, cause you, I love her. And you wouldn't have to ruin the drawings would, in the book. Yeah. And you wouldn't have to dru- uh, ruin like the, the thought of like Daniel Radcliffe is always Harry Potter. You don't have to ruin that. Like with another actor's face. No, it's actually um, Michael Keaton's Harry Potter. Now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so and it's funny to me because it's just like, you're talking about cartoon Harry Potter. And all I'm thinking is, Love your soul. <laughs> um, just yeah, that just, as a whole series. I think that would be like interesting because the, the main thing that I like <clears> about <throat> Harry Potter, it's like, it, yes, it's this high fantasy thing and it's about wizards and all this like, yeah. shit. Um, but but that's thing, just a layer. Like that's it's seriously just a layer because most of the people take that and use it to appeal to kids and make it kind of like this bullshit happy yeah, whatever. It's like not it doesn't like, connect it's not to real life at all. Grave it's, and it's like complete like high fantasy as, and it like um doesn't make sense. Like Lord of the Rings or something. Yeah. Not, and that's why like I honestly think it's that serious Harry, shit th- and it, like the loss of innocence and everything. It's just And I'm gonna intense. I'm gonna take this moment to transition to another book series. But I honestly think like two of the best like book series, um and they're two of my favorite book series is Harry Potter. Um, and I honestly think that's one of the best book series. And it's definitely yeah. going to go down as a classic. Yeah. Um, and the other one is Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, um, definitely. Have you actually ever read those books? Yeah. Um, it, it's just like the way – that's another like great uh, novelist who does world building right and knows how to paint a picture like with these words. And like – I've had a lot of trouble of like uh, reading a lot of books from like our AP English class of like really envisioning like what like where these stories are taking place and whatnot. And um, there are very few like writers who actually stand out to me and like make me think about like what's going on in this world. And um, why am I blanking on his name? I don't know why, but I am. Adam Douglas. I, is it Adam? Or, yeah, it's Adam Douglas. Is it? I think so. Look, we'll you just look, keep talking. You I've look done it up, two but book he's also, reports on this shit. And I still don't know the name. Um, he's just so great at world building. I remember when my dad, like, I remember seeing the book cover as a little kid. I had the little green alien. He had the. the he looks up. like a friend. I was like, oh, this looks cool. Like, I really like this artwork. And my dad was explaining to me like what the story was. I was like, really interested in it. Yeah. And it, like when I and that was like when I was really little. I think I was like in, like first or second grade. And then when I got to like fourth or. fifth fifth grade i um someone got for me i, I forget who but you they got me. this you know what his name is douglas adams douglas adams <laughs> <laughs> um but um hey i got the words right though just in the i actually order. went to his grave when i went to england oh shit that's awesome it's this tiny little grave all it says is writer <laughs> and it's even funnier because it's right near Karl marx's huge ass grave that's fucking where hilarious. it's like Karl marx's giant head and whenever you look at it you're afraid it's going to start shooting lasers. <laughs> <laughs> and like, that was like another thing of like, um, like uh, traveling through like Arthur Dent's story. And like, it, it sucks that they didn't do like a follow up movie. Um, well, I felt like the movie was like a satisfying amount of it. Yeah. Like, I, like, um, and also they had like the TV series, whatever that came out in like the seventies or eighties or whatever. You know, and that was cute. There are actually two doctor who episodes that, 
Douglas Adams wrote oh. and Arthur Dent's in them. Oh, that's fucking awesome. That makes sense. <laughs> um, but it was also like, just like this world building of like, I could totally envision what the the restaurant at the end of the universe like looks like. And um, there's this one point where I forget which book it's in, but it, it's a great moment where Arthur Dent, he's in this like black room and he has no idea where the fuck he is. And this voice, this like just disembodied voice is talking to him about you have killed me hundreds of times. It's about oh. like how like this uh, soul or whatever has lived through like different creatures that have weirdly enough cr- always crossed Arthur Dent's path. Yeah. And like this weird like he had, he like killed a fly and then like something else. He was at like a, a game or something and he was killed by something that Arthur had caused or and whatnot. And it was just like just like God, he's fucking awesome. It was just such a, like a really well told story. And I like. Um, the Zaphod Beeblebrock's uh, specific story was like okay. Um, I think it was at that point I was like, we don't really need another one. Plus, Trillian's like the worst female character in writing history. Yeah, Trillian's not that interesting, um, and she's just, uh, and of course, the, she's weird. played by like one of the most annoying fucking <clears throat> female actresses, which is uh, Zoe yeah, Deschanel. Discount to Katy Perry. <laughs> um, Damn, and they look they, the same. he was. Yeah. Douglas Adams, right? I'm, I'm like yeah, now I'm Douglas fucking like Adams. lost. No, it's Douglas. Adam Driver. Fuck you. <laughs> um, he and it was just like interesting. Like I remember reading a book about him actually, and this is like an, another like favorite favorite book of mine. It was like, um, like his like thought process of like creating this book and like writing this book of he was drunk and like was laying in like a random field looking up at the stars, and he had all he had on him was like this um, hitchhiker's like book. Of like getting through England or whatnot, and he was like looking and he's like, "What if there, like, what if there was like creatures out there, like aliens and whatnot, and what if they had like a guide for like traveling through space and shit?" And it was just like really fascinating stuff like that. So I, I've rambled on enough about my favorite books. Like, what what are your guys, some of your guys' favorite books? Do you want to go first or should I go first? Oh, uh, you go first, Andre. The City of Desi. Desi. So. Uh, uh, some of my favorite books is uh, I mentioned it earlier, but Series of Unfortunate Events. It's oh like, my god, yeah, it's Definitely. like my Harry Potter because like you fucking love that shit. Because I always love Series of Unfortunate Events because to me it was always about like I want to read those again. Exactly how Dan Daniel Handler as Lemony Snicket wrote it. Yeah, mm. because like it's this very specific way of writing where it's only <clears throat> how he writes. Yeah, where it's like kind of like gothic. It's a kind modern of- quippy. Yeah, gothic modern quippy a little bit like a private eye also yeah, as well exactly. like that style. very film that noir-ish but yeah, like a weird film noir where it's like there's tape on my shoe why is there tape on my shoe um yeah. and so, i'm trying to remember like just like the also like the like the worlds that he has built and like the environments of like the first the movie is based off of like the first three books yeah um and that's why i was like Man, I really wish they had done this right where, like, the first movie was just the first book. But I can understand, like, there's not a lot happening in the first book. Uh, and it's so a short book. It's it, they're all, like, feet. really short yeah. books. And, um, but, like, I would love to have seen, like, um, who's the girlfriend? Um, Esme. Esme. Well, like, we really don't meet her until, like, the fifth. Yeah, the Earthsats elevator. Yeah, and she's, like, a new adoptee because, like, each book they always no, wait, have. that's like, the sixth book. It's the I sixth, can actually okay. name all of them in order, um, right, probably. And it's like it's about like she is dating like this actually like really nice guy mm. at the time, and like every book they have a different like adoptee, uh, like a adoptee parent. And in this one, it's like her and this like really nice dude, and they live in this really fancy house. And she's all about like what's in style and whatnot, and like uh, shade is in style. So the whole street has just like really big trees, so there's like no sunlight. And then, like the next day is like, oh, sunlight's in style. So they like cut down all the trees and whatnot. And I always love how we don't know whether the stair the stairs are forty eight or eighty four. Mm. And I'm like, just like the mystery. I hate that I never who, finished those. Uh, the mystery with the, what, what's the, the what's the group? Um, uh, VIP. The VI- no, is that VID? It's VID. <laughs> it's like a, I've only read the first two. Oh my god! It's I have so a bunch good. of them. I, I've lost a bunch of copies for some reason. That's something like I'm gonna get all. Of them. I remember actually being in like um, I was in in elementary school. I wasn't in middle school yet. We had like that weird school where it was only fourth and fifth graders. I remember going to that library every fucking day, waiting for like the new like next like Lemony Snicket book. Uh, Lemony Snicket. Uh, VFD. 
VFD. There you go. Um, and I remember like just every day, like waiting for the new Lemony Snicket uh, book to come out. And but yeah, like the mystery with like VFD and like like their parents were in it, but like also. Um, why am I blanking on this? Count name? Olaf. It, like also, Count Olaf was in it, so it was like this weird thing India, of like, oh, did, were they Count friends? Olaf's at, entire group. Yeah, and like, were they friends at one point? Like, what's going on with it? And then like, and like, like what's the sequel with these two twins that disappear dur- after yeah, the and like, elevator, and then we meet his brother. Oh my god! And like the twins, and like, uh, like when they're being raised by the town, and like the they they keep uh, finding the little sonnets. And they figure out it's like the girl who's writing them, and she's like leaving them near the tree because they've been kidnapped by Con Olaf. I, I adore those. Books. Oh my god! And like the end was like this really weird, touching. Like I don't know if the end is like the best book out of all of them. I, but, I definitely have a favorite, but I can never remember which one it is. Um, I think the my room? favorite is actually the, the reptile what's, room. The reptile room is fun, but it's not yeah. my favorite. My favorite is the hotel one. What's the hotel one called? The, penumia, the penultimate. I, I think it's the penultimate peril. Yeah, the penultimate peril because that all of them has a literary awesome. titles except for the end. Yeah, yeah like the end. And I remember like the like, bad beginning, the reptile room. Dude, I remember the, the gravity the of one? the end coming out was like the same for me as a kid when the last Harry Potter book came out. I was like, this is this is it. This like, is it. This is the big one. Um, and it's actually like a really touching thing where like you learn about like Count Olaf and like he actually becomes like. A like relatable, a, yeah. like a good person. Yeah. And who, someone's pregnant in that book, aren't they? Uh, it's the one person that they meet. On the island, right? No, they didn't meet them on the island. I think they met him at the beginning of the penultimate peril. Oh, uh, okay. One, yeah, it's yeah. like red Because he like, life. he like delivers the, the child and then like he ends up dying or something. Spoilers. Um, mm. You're like, I don't give a fuck. And you already know everyone well, yeah, else who was I'll, on I'll the island. I'll read them at some point. Yeah. Oh my God. They're like, they're so good. Like, and this thing is they're oh. so good but at the same time they're so frustrating because there's so many things you never know like what is that giant question mark in the ocean mm, yep um and that that's one like that's something definitely something like i want to go back to the library for and whenever i pick them up like i'll let you like borrow it for a couple of days because it's literally like a day read right um, i'm gonna buy like a bunch of the copies that i'm missing and lend them to you. i remember always seeing them at like the book fairs that came around every once in a while oh, i miss those books um, when we're at the library, I'd always get. I have, I have, a, I have a, sorry, you can go on, but I have a quick side question. Who plays the Fonz? Um, Harry uh, Winkler. Thank you. All right, go on. Now stop looking at my Harry Winkler. <laughs> <laughs> um, then when we're at the library, like because you mentioned going to the library, I just remembered as like a side note that I'd always get like the Simpsons like booklets of like just the comic book. Oh yeah, like, yeah. oh yeah, uh, I have Simpsons. a bunch of those. I yeah. collect them. Yeah, I love those things. Um, were you going to say any other favorite books? Oh yeah. Uh, I remember the first book that really like got me hooked in it was Animal Farm by George Orwell. Oh, mm. right. You mean you had a conversation like a, like I think like a year ago or something about this? Yeah. The funny thing is in elementary school, I did a book report on it. Right, right, right. And my dad actually has the cover that I drew for it framed where it's this pig standing up with a whip a hat and drinking liquor. <laughs> so hilarious. that, that's like... A uh, huge book for me, and I love that book. Right, I'm reading 1984 right now. Uh, to and then Ready Player One is really good. Mm. Did you finish that? I did not. I didn't even start it. You were telling me about it. It's really good. I yeah. love that book, and I have the next book Ernest Klein wrote, Armada. I haven't read that one yet. My favorite book of all time though is Snow Crash by Neil Stevenson. Mm. Uh, do you, either of you know who Neil Stevenson is? He's a sci-fi author who's known for writing like these huge books mm-hmm. and snow crash is crazy because it was written in, like the 90s and it's all about the way of how we will we'll connect to each other through the internet mm-hmm. through like it's the, like the second life type program where you completely live inside like this computer program and it's really weird because it's like parts of the books are about memes before memes became a thing it's really weird it's like super weird because it's all it's like Neil Stevenson perfectly predicted the future, and I love that book so much. I'll lend it to you. I that sounds it. ridiculous. It sounds like if The Matrix was good. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, Also, uh, Slaughterhouse-Five by Kurt Vonnegut. Mm. Seven loves Kurt Vonnegut. Uh, so does my dad. Dad's love. <laughs> All Kurt dads Vonnegut. love really love uh, Kurt Vonnegut. Um, 
Uh, I got to give a shout out to uh, Do the Funky Pickle by Jerry Spinelli. Jerry Spinelli is actually like a really pickle. fantastic uh, author. I no, think Jerry Spinelli's the girl from Recess. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to think of what else he has nice. um, written. But Jerry. Do the Funky Pickle is a big one. <laughs> that was a really good one of like this like wimpy kid who like wants to like ask out this uh, like really badass like punk girl to like a dance and stuff and he like but the wimpy relate. kid has like <laughs> is this one of those weird like kids books from that period of time where like there were those weird kids books like the day my butt went psycho oh we were talking about that though, yeah as well. <laughs> the day, but like it was Jerry Spinelli like also wrote like really great um like this sounds more sophisticated than the day my butt went psycho <laughs> <laughs> he also he also wrote Maniac McGee which was about this kid who um his like parents had died in a car crash and he didn't want to like live with his aunt and uncle so he just like started running and running and running and he ends up in this town full of like all African American people and it's th- this is in like a time where um you know, there there's still like sort of like racist like racism going on. Like well, there's still racism going <laughs> Back on. Back when racism was a thing. Well, it's still a thing, but it was still like when like they still had like they're still very separated and he like didn't really segregation. S- yeah, like segregation in a way. And he still he didn't really understand that concept and like because he ended up getting taken in by um like this uh African American family and it's like he it was just like a really touching book. And then you got like a a book like Loser, which I actually still own, um, about this, just like this really weird uh, kid who was born with like his stomach was actually like um, when he was born, his stomach was upside down. Mm-hmm. Um, so he has like constant like throwing up problems and like oh, um, all of this stuff. And That's neat. Nice. It's literally just his story of going through school um, and like just all of these like weird little side things. I think he it goes from like first grade to fifth grade, I want to say. Um and just like this really just touching story of like his dad is like a um, like a mail delivery guy and he like aspires to like be that one day and uh you know like he has a neighborhood kid who comes uh moves next door he ba- makes him like a giant like cookie cake mm. and he fucks it up he gets really upset by it and all this stuff uh and then you've got um crash I don't remember crash as well but uh like that well but it was a very it was about this kid who his nickname was Crash because like there's a story when he was like a little baby he had like a football helmet on and he like knocked his sister over or whatnot and it's like a story about like him I forget I forget I remember really liking it but the I, the best one yeah was Ringer which was this town like every year there was a day where this uh, this town did this basically like pigeon shooting thing where let me see the cover it's like this kid. I have this book. I've never read it though. Oh my god! Like, I, so I, I remember these Winger were and it's like, like he wrote a book. All about of these, that all of these books were actually like read by like my third grade teacher. Like he was obviously a really big fan yeah. of Jerry Spinelli, and it was like I'm trying to remember. Um, my weirdly. favorite book's the one where you pet the kitty and there's like yeah, the fur so in the like, book. Like every day or every there's a day every year where like this town like uh, they get together and like they collect all these pigeons and they shoot them and like pigeons who aren't dead yet they send out like ten year old kids snake to, clubbing to if they're not dead yet they like wring their necks get, and this kid shit. like Mark raise is, is raised to like stuff. not really he's not really into it he actually like ends up like finding finding like a injured like pet pigeon and not like this pigeon and he like raises it back to health and, and Lisa pulls. Simpson gets Barry White. That's what I'm saying. Like this sounds like the Simpsons episode. Um, it's a snake whacking day. So <laughs> it, that was just like your the, Jerry Spinelli. If you if, if you're looking for great kids books, I like check out his works because they're really really good. Um, I have some books. And then also my last one. And then I'll shut up for the rest of this time. Barrett loves the books. <laughs> Henry Wrinkler um, had a book series. <laughs> hey, Henry Wrinkler. Hey, I knew um, it wasn't Montiero. <laughs> um, I, the, I, I forget what the series is called, but the first one is called um, Niagara Falls or Does It? And it's just, uh, it, it's basically what it sounds like is they, it's sort of like him, but as a kid, but in like a modern day it's like sort of area hey. and like it's just like he's like sort of an underachiever and like the first book is about like over the summer he doesn't do like a book report of niagara falls he actually like tries to build like a replica of niagara niagara falls he's like this sort of underachiever and i remember the one book that stood out to me was 
he had to do like this uh like summer class or whatever and i just remember like he made friends with like this younger kid and he was like teaching him, him about like all of the stuff that he had learned and then when he had to give like the final presentation he like totally fucked it up and was embarrassed but then the kid that he taught like like went up in front of the class like one after he ran away and he went up to the rest of the class was like hey this is like what he taught me and he ended up getting an a for the class because mm-hmm. the teacher was impressed like hey like you taught this like little kid about like all the stuff that you learned I don't know. That's adorable. Yeah. It was, like, it was a, yeah. Those were like also very touching like really book good. series in like the fourth and fifth grade. I have some books that I assume are nostalgic for all of us. Mm. The Wayside School books. Oh, yeah, God. Definitely. Oh, my yeah. God. Holy shit. Yeah. You haven't thought about those I haven't years. thought about those books yeah. in fucking ever. It's been a really long time. Yeah. It's just like, I loved those books as a kid because they were like <laughs> the exact right kind of oh, weird for when you're young. Because it's like when you're older, you want the kind of weird where it's like, this is making me think about different things but this is like this is weird in like a cute funny way i just yeah. i the a couple of things i remember from those books there was no floor 19 there's it no was... floor 19 um the author is a character in the book who's like the janitor or something yeah, Lewis. um yeah and he damn you hella remember these <laughs> um and he in one of the books he comes and he tells the class about a story of a really, really weird school that only has two floors and there's a bunch of, like, uh, classrooms on each floor. And they're like, whoa, that's weird. And uh, I just thought that was funny. And then, like... Do you remember what? the crappy Nickelodeon show? No. Yeah, there was a crappy oh Nickelodeon God. Wayside show. Yeah. Um, but, anyway, like, the... Yeah, uh, and they made Todd the main character, the guy who's always sent early on the kindergarten bus. <laughs> <laughs> um, the the one thing... And I remember, like, the principal was trying to figure out, like, how, pe- like, kids should, like, walk upstairs and whatnot. He's like, when you're walking up the stairs... Be on the right side, and when you're walking down the stairs, be on the left side, so you, you, get, you guys don't run into each other. But like, he doesn't think about it. This is a fucking like zany shit, man. I have not thought about that in fucking ever. They were, they were super nostalgic. I remember stealing one of those from my library. Nice. And it's funny because they were like Henry didn't Bunch steal it. Bunch of cops those. run in. <laughs> it's funny because they were all like Henry didn't steal it. Those aren't his kind of books. <laughs> <laughs> and look at him now. And now you little know Miss Williger. <laughs> I, I just imagine those books Ms. like Williger. there were there were those kids' books that was less about like expanding imagination and more like straightforward for kids. Like, yeah, it was just, yeah, it was like easy reading for children. <laughs> I remember. Oh fuck! There was this one book. Ah uh, ah uh, ah. Uh. Okay. You know, yeah, I was done. I was done. Uh, I'm trying to think of like other books that were like I used to read a lot as a kid. It's like I I listen to a lot of audiobooks to help me sleep. Mm, mm. Mm. But then that means some of my favorite books aren't actually like. Well, I said we can include nonfiction, so like some of my favorite books are stuff like Freakonomics or out or Outliers. Mm. Right, right. Okay. Like I've always loved those books of just like understanding things that happen in our everyday life more than we actually do already. Right. Or Fast Food Nation. That was always a fun one to read. Yeah. I remember this book where this girl had, like, a magic, like, notebook or something. It was basically Death Note. Uh, <laughs> but, like, for kids, girl. but for, like, kids. Where so, she, wow. Like, Death whatever Death she wrote kids. down, whatever she wrote down would, like, become true and all this shit. Like, and I just remember, love like, no. Every time you write someone's name, they get a hug from a random person. <laughs> and don't kill book, themselves. And I remember, like, this book called, like, Get Rich Quick Club. Oh, yeah. Okay, actually, no. <laughs> I, I remember that one because, like, you know, you get all these books from, like, the book fair. Or yeah. Whatever. I remember that being a book fair one. Um, There's definitely a genre of book fair books like Franklin the Turtle. Yeah. Uh, I remember and then, like, getting, the, like, the obviously um, Captain Underpants. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. yeah. Who doesn't love Captain Underpants? Yeah. Fucking weirdos. It's like, I called that library core along with Goosebumps because no one ever sees, like, a completely fresh copy of Captain Underpants or Goosebumps. It's always... In a library with part of the cover ripped off. <laughs> I have... I was the one who ripped those covers. <laughs> okay, that, um, I have I have like half a set of goosebumps that I ended up getting at mm. the book fair yeah. that are in like perfect condition. That's I wrong. Know. Yeah. I remember they need growing water up, damage. <laughs> I remember growing up like I loved goosebumps stories, but I was always really scared of them. So like I for now some reason they're not scary at all. For, yeah, they're yeah. fucking dumb. But I remember just as a kid, I would never feel comfortable leaving those books in my room at night for some fucking reason. Like, I always thought, like, the monsters were going to come out of the books. Like, the Goosebumps uh, movie, where, like, the monsters come out of the books. And I was scary one. The scary books for kids. 
fucking scary story that's telling the dark. That's oh, becoming a yeah, that's on screen thing. But yep. those pictures. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. That's yeah. what you remember. Out of those, the stories didn't matter because they were the exact, like, oh, the wife had the back. It's not until you saw the pictures. Those oh, pictures my God. were the fucked up. Awful. Yeah. yeah. I, I love like that. Most, like, that was, like, yeah. a, the I worst kid's those. book. Like, whoever, like, whatever parent, like, bought that as, like, for your kid. Like My dad. You're very demented. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I look at those just for the art because I think the art's fantastic. Yeah, it's like, now you look back on it and it's like from a completely like artistic standpoint because they're not as scary yeah. but as a kid it was like fucking terrifying like the one where it's like the woman's face was cracked in yeah like the hole there i remember the one that always scared me was like this one picture where it was a horse skeleton oh actually no, sure. i don't remember that one yeah well, we'll look through them when we come to my house whenever we're you have them. um yeah. And I then would... they were released those with like new art done by the guy that did lemony, the artwork for a series on Fortune Events. And it's not the same. Mm, because yeah. Scary Stories was always about like, this is making me shit. Yeah. Um, I think, and then like <laughs> the one, the one last shout out, the actually the last shout out that I'm going to give is the Day My Butt One Psycho. Oh, yeah, yeah. That book it's another, is like, so fucking good. Like book fair treasure. <laughs> yeah. Oh. And uh, it was just like one of those things. Like I remember being so excited for like the next one to come out. Um, I remember another uh, great, like, book that you would always find in like, book, book fairs. Uh, book fairs. Uh, when Diary of a Wimpy Kid was huge. See, that was when I started started to fall out of like that genre yeah. of books. Like yeah, the I first one, I remember young. getting the first one, and I was like, "Oh, this is cool." But then I never like followed up on any. Like of those the last after. book fair, a couple things that I got were like, that was, like Star grade. Wars, like expanded stuff. Like or the no, booklets. I was in middle school. I think back when I was in Texas, all of I had at my book fair was a gun. Oh, and um, how to eat fried worms. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, that was That's a good, good book. One. It was, was a also terrible a, movie. I remember the movie just being like, yeah. "This is weird." I don't like this. <laughs> um, I remember the a big book for me was The Outsiders. I used to love that book. Mm. I've read it like probably like the eight one times. with Pony Boy. Yeah, yeah. I used to love that book a lot. I actually had to do a like one of the first for that in my ninth grade English class, and I did it as a song. <laughs> what? Um, I just imagine you doing like all these, like you turned it into a musical and you're performing it in front of your teacher alone. <laughs> and she's like sitting there like critiquing. Um, <laughs> no, it's a, it was actually the one teacher who did enjoy it. Do you guys have any so, other mentions? I haven't said any. Oh, fuck. Like, yeah. Whatsoever. Yeah. What, what books do you like? Um, I'm going to keep it short because we've been talking for a while. I don't like books. <laughs> um, because like my mom's really into reading and um she got me into my whole like horror thing yeah um so she used to always make me read like stephen king books all the mm. time so i absolutely love stephen king's and like stephen king movie adaptations and stuff um i remember reading it at a really early age and oh, not sleeping God. <laughs> um and then you watched the movie and you were wondering where the child orgy scene was yeah and then um I remember when I got to Lincoln, Philip made me read it again, and then I couldn't sleep for a while. <laughs> um, uh, Rose Red, I really love. Um, there's a Stephen King book called Cell that they're turning into, I think, a TV show, hmm. which should be interesting. Have you read Under the Dome? Yeah. It's, uh, I don't care. It's bad. <laughs> it the show, they- Do You mean the Simpsons movie? Don't download yeah <laughs> like the show was horrible the book was bad i just didn't at that point like once that book came out i was done with stephen king imagine if they ever made a dark a tower movie movie series oh yeah it would go on forever yeah um my favorite book ever is um clive barker's cabal have you ever read it i i instantly knew you were a clive barker fan <laughs> okay i love clive barker um not so much his movies but his books and his video games. Now Clive Barker's Jericho. <laughs> Except for Jericho. Um, but if have you ever seen the movie Nightbreed? So I haven't even seen, seen Hellraiser, man. Oh, hell okay, the movies are fucking boring as shit. I don't like Hellraiser that much. Even the first one? Yeah, I think it's a bit much. I think it's like too Clive Barker for its own good. I think Nightbreed, the movie and the book that it came from, Cabal, is like perfect because it's like it's not like trying so hard to be terrifying and gory that it's like it's just stupid um but it also doesn't it like it has such a big like like the lore for it is like so much bigger than what the movie is that it like you just want more and you want to like see more which is why you should read the book it's fucked up and it's like it's almost like you took like the first hellraiser movie and mixed it with like 
fucking like what's something like super kids like high fantasy like never ending story or something like it's yeah. like it's it's the most non-violent like clive barker thing um i don't know i suggest reading it it's not a okay. it, it's technically not a horror movie and it's it's like a thing cabal is something someone who hasn't like isn't into clive barker should read as like something to start them off um but that one's like my favorite book of all time. It's fucking wonderful. Nice. It's like a weird like underground society. It also has a lot to do with death. And like they have all these like creatures in it, almost like Jim Henson. Like Jim Henson. <laughs> I heard Jim Henson worked on the movie. I'm not too sure about so that. So it's though. like weird Clive Barkery labyrinth. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Like it's like fucked up, but like it's super like fantasy and like puppety. It's weird. It's great though. Mm. Um, and it's like in that weird period of time where like, the crow was a thing, so everybody kept trying to do that. But you, this, you guys can't dress up as the crow. You're gonna look lame when you're dressed up as the crow, and then Satan shows up dressed as the crow. Yeah. So it was just like at that time period where everybody was trying to do the crow, and Clive Barker went like the completely other way because he already did Hellraiser and like went through. I that. already am the crow. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think of another like kids one. That I'm we trying might to think. All of, to. There's a book about this kid that goes on an adventure. Oh, um, <laughs> it starts off in like a library. I've been trying to think of it for the last couple of minutes. It's like, is it the? Did they make a movie out of yeah, it? Yeah, they it's did. It's the one with um, Macaulay Culkin, the, the word mat, the, the like library, the pen master, the library king. The pen master sounds familiar. Oh no, it's it's something Moonwalker? master. It's the. How do you spell Macaulay? Oh, okay, there we go. Is that really Macaulay Culkin? Just look at her. Oh my Hella, god, his fucking. Someone face. who Hella looks like him. At least. Uncle Buck. <laughs> the page master. Page yeah. master. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. That was. Yeah, a, I remember really, was, I remember really, really liking that. Yeah. Um. What was I gonna say? Um. I have you guys read Princess Bride? Because I'm. I think I'm one of the only people who actually read it. No, I've Movie actually. Movie or bust, man. Huh. I've actually never read it. That was a good one. Um. Trying to think of like a like a kids one though that we might because I feel like we haven't we like we missed so much yeah that we haven't touched base on oh do you remember A to Z Adventures yeah yeah that was no. a fun one. you don't no I do yeah I remember there was another book series like that what was the one where it was it was like my uncle's a werewolf or something like that goosebumps. <laughs> my dad the rock star that one Nickelodeon <laughs> <show>. <laughs> with Gene Simmons yeah um, but do you remember there were those books where yeah. it was like my gym counselor is a genie yeah. and all the covers look like like it was like young children gawking at homosexuals it was like goosebumps for kids that didn't read goosebumps um I was re- so in middle school it was like I like just had moved to San Francisco yeah and I was still, like, a complete piece of shit kid. Yeah, I mean, you're still a piece of yeah. shit. All kids are um, pieces of shit. Some don't grow up. But piece to, of shit. But to kind of, like, get me out of, like, being a delinquent, my teacher had given me the Vampire's Assistant. Do you guys remember that series no. at all? They made, like, the stupid, like, movie It sounds adaptation. like an Anne Rice book, but... <laughs> it was, like, they made a stupid, like, um, movie spinoff off of it that had, like, nothing to do with a book. No. It's pretty much what, like... Like, if American Horror Story Freak Show was, like, good and done by creative people, <laughs> like, that's what it would have okay. been. Yeah. It, it was just about, like, a kid who, like, who has, like, a fucked up friend and, like, they're really into, like, horror movies and shit and I, like, re- related oh. to that. And then they, like, left to go see, like, this, like, like have found a, it was, like, a really eerie book and, like, they found a flyer for this, like, underground freak show that they weren't supposed to go to. They sneak out, they go to it and, like, shit immediately goes down because they stay they like stay there after to like sneak in and try to find shit. I just remembered my favorite book as a kid. Huh? Did either of you ever read Freak the Mighty? No. No. So I love this book because it's about there's this there's this kid and he's like that stereotypical like huge super dumb kind of kid. Like Russell. Yeah. <laughs> from Gr- Russell. From Russell Smith. <laughs> <laughs> so he's yeah, like this Russell's fight for peace <laughs> so he's like this big, big dumb kid yeah. but he becomes best friends with with this genius kid 
We were just talking about this like a couple months ago when were you were we? at my house. Yeah, because we were talking about bullying. You said how Russell reminded you of this character. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I don't like, remember this the, at all. The reverse of this. <laughs> like this ex- but, but anyway, he him. becomes best friends with this kid who's an absolute genius, but he has this disorder with his body mm. where yeah, his body doesn't grow, but his internal organs keep getting bigger. And from that, you can guess how it ends. Yeah. It's sad. Yeah. But I loved that book as a kid. It was made into a movie once. I think Brad Pitt was in it. Benjamin Button. Brad Pitt played the small child. <laughs> <laughs> there's but, another book about... I completely forgot Benjamin Button was a movie. Yeah. Um, there's, a, there's another kid's book that I really liked, or, or, or young teen or whatever, um, about this kid who like finds out his... Like, uncle was in this, like, secret society, and he finds, like, this sword that's been passed down in his family. It was like a series of unfortunate events. It was like a a modern sort of um, setting, too. Uh, I remember really liking that. Um, It's not Percy Jackson, right? No. Uh, Because I know people who love Percy Jackson. I did not like Percy Jackson whatsoever. Oh, what's the the kid version of 007? What are those books called? Artemis Fowl. No. Damn it. Not Artemis Fowl. Um, but, you but read he was Artemis actually, Fowl, didn't you? yeah, I read like the first couple books. Um, my grandpa was actually a huge fan of Artemis Fowl, or he the still is. He's, he's still alive. I don't, I don't know why I said it was the kids' movie. Uh, no, it, and it was also made into a movie where he's literally 007 as a kid, like he's part of the he's part of James Emma. Bond Jr. No, it's not that was like, a video game. <laughs> but it, it like it had like, about Agent you, Cody in, the, in the movie <laughs> in the movie it was like Ewan like, McGregor was his house. uncle. He was like sort of like a cameo role in that. Um, um, Wedge, Wedge fuck. was in it. No, from Star Wars, because that's his uncle. Went, shut up, <laughs> <laughs> that's his uncle. No, Bob's your uncle. Oh my God, what was it called? Um, we're not ending this topic until I fucking find out. Damn it! Well, while you figure that out, um, I had just remembered something. Oh, and then like just to talk, just to like cover like nonfictional stuff. Um, please like, kill me. like please kill me. Um, have you there's read- a John Lennon uh, biography that I remember reading um, that was really really well done I forget what it was called because there's fucking read- a million of them have you ever read Bridges to Babylon yeah yeah I have that I haven't read it yet it's, it's great it's great um, but yeah Please Kill Me which like covers anything that early punk years that like I listen to now <laughs> um, and just uh, kind of all the fucked up things that happened I heard that a lot of the book though was kind of like purposely made to make everybody look bad just so oh, yeah, he can book. make the book. <laughs> okay, I found out. Do, the the kid 007 that I'm thinking about. Alex the Alex Ryder series. The first one was called Stormbreaker. Oh, I vaguely remember yeah, that. That sounds I, like something that happened when I was a kid and also I feel like there was a PS2 game. Um, I don't think there's Accurate. a game. That's but, the exact kind of memory thing this has. But really. the the books were fucking awesome. Um and it was just like it, all of the twists that happened in those books were just really great. So if you're again, if you're I looking do for those, if, if you're looking for like a really good like kid series that isn't you know Harry Potter, um, Alex Ryder series. Uh, the first one's called Stormbreaker. Um, Alex O. Ryder. Um, and then also and just double. I, I, I think we should. Ki- I think we should continue continue on because we've been. <laughs>